Welcome to the My Personal Football Coach Youth Soccer Player Development Podcast, episode 25 with Jao Trello. Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson Hurst. Hi guys, welcome back to another show. Uh, this week we've got a fantastic guest, uh, Joao Trallo, who's um, a very experienced coach from Benfica, uh, the famous academy in Portugal. Uh, really um, privileged he's agreed to come on the show and share his wealth of knowledge and experience. He's worked his way all the way throughout the, throughout the academy um, in all the years he's been there. Also had experience working in the first team. So it can give us a really good insight into the workings of the uh, Benfica Academy and what's made it one of the strongest academies uh, in European football and produce some top, top players. So really excited he's come on. He's a gentleman and a really intelligent guy. So I know if you, you're going to really enjoy this one. Uh, lots going on with my personal football coach as usual. Um, really privileged to announce, uh, to welcome uh, Samford Rangers in uh, Melbourne, Australia and Premier Skills here in West London as partner clubs. Uh, um, they're taking the opportunity to take advantage of the club partnership program so all their players get the app and uh, the coaches get the app as well and the online coaches uh, coaches pass as well the online resource for coaches and also support from myself as well with regular calls so really really privileged uh, more clubs coming on board and we look to have more clubs coming on from all around the world uh, every month so that's really going well so really fantastic the app's going from strength to strength so getting lots of great feedback uh, users all around the world um, if you don't know my personal football coach is an app uh, which you can you, you for players and parents and coaches you log in and it's, it's like a course uh, so a ball mastery course so you can set it up and do it yourself so quality consistent uh, ball mastery course that you can uh, improve for players at all levels uh, that's going from strength to strength uh, we're, we're releasing the five to sevens program as well the five to seven year olds program that'll be coming out in the next month so really excited about that also just want to say a big thanks to all the feedback we've had for uh, our new project inside the academy uh, our short film um, series which uh, is now hosted on our new YouTube channel Inside the Academy. We've had a fantastic amount of views in a short time and some great feedback so, uh, so we've got some new episodes coming out very soon. If you haven't checked it out, check it out now. Just uh, follow the link um, for this podcast to the YouTube channel and that will take you to the, new tube, the, to the new YouTube channel. So we're, we're housing all our podcasts there as well now and then plus that new uh, short documentary series. Uh, we've got a few, few more excellent episodes coming up uh, at some uh, big academies so uh, make sure you stay tuned for that. So lots going on. Look, the summer's coming. Uh, it's a, always a busy time of year for me. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to June, especially. I work with a lot of young pros who uh, want to get ready for for pre-season just before they go back in t uh, to first team training. So working with some top top players, really really uh, feel privileged, and it's going to be really exciting. I'm going to try and uh, get some stuff to show you guys as well. But just goes to show, you know, a lot of people talk about young players, young pros now, and too much, too young. But you know, all the guys I work with, uh, all I see is uh, young men who are who have the desire and the intensity to improve and be the best they can be and try and uh, go in and make an impact in first team training to try and get those opportunities in the first team. So really exciting, really good to see uh, the you know football's in a good place with, the, with our young players coming through. So uh, without further ado, anyway, let's get into the show. I hope you enjoy this one. We've got some other podcasts coming out very soon as well. So keep it locked. I'll see you soon. So, Jal Trello, welcome to the show. Thank you. Uh, apolog pleasure. Apologies for my pronunciation, um, but I, I'll, I'll try my best. So, Jao, can you just um, give us a little bit of a brief background about your, um, your your playing and coaching experience? So, just briefly, and then we'll go into it a little bit more detail. Yes, of course. I, I started uh, 17 years ago in Befica. Um, I graduated in physical education. Uh, and then uh, I wanted to, to follow my passion about football. Uh, I really don't know what I wanted to do uh, in in that in that ages, but when I started to coach, uh, I found my my passion, I found my ambitions, I found the um, the, the profession that will fit in my uh, own profile, 
and I started with the younger ages. I started with eight years old, then I, I moved um, to the olders, old year, old age groups, and um, in these 17 years, I worked with uh, every age group, uh, included the first team level as assistant. And now, from seven years ago, I, I'm the under 19 coach. Uh, I, I also worked with a, with a regional team of Lisboa, uh, with the ages of under 18 and under 13. And yes, that's my, my background. So obviously Benfica is uh, it's internationally recognised as one of the best player development centres in world football. Why, why do you think that is? What's the secret to your success? Yes, there are a lot of secrets, but um, the most the most important ones are, of course, the the vision that our president had. Uh, he had a vision. He wanted to to create a project that uh, that promotes uh, the youths, the Portuguese youths, uh, to be the the basis of uh, the first team uh, level of Benfica, uh, and this project now. Are consolidated, consolidated, and we wanted to to move to another level, of course, every every year. But one of our main secrets it was the vision of the, the our president had a couple of years ago. But uh, other, of course, other secrets, not secrets, but other important uh, things that we I think that distinguished for, from the others are, of course, we have a, a guideline. From the, the top to the bottom, uh, all the coaches uh, follow this guideline. Uh, we we have a very good relationship between all the age groups, and of course the relationship with the professional age groups like first team and B team. We have a very good channel, a communication channel, well defined, and this is one of the secrets of our uh, our project. Another one, of course, is the the, the scouting system. We have a lot of good scouts. We have a very well prepared scouting system to 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 find the best players in Portugal uh, since the younger ages. And then uh, another secret uh, is the methodology that we we apply in our academy. We try to to have the best methodology to to, to develop uh, the things that we we. We think that are the most important ones, like decision making, like um, uh, the capacity to adapt to every scenarios, uh, the technique, of course, the tactical analysis, the, the physical output, of course. But the main things are related with the decision making uh, capacity, and of course, the capacity to adapt to every scenario that any coach can demand. So then tell us a little bit about that then, um, what does that look like in practice? So let's start then at the, the younger age groups, for instance. What, what, what age do you get players in? What's the first ages you get players into the academy? Uh, the, we started very, very early. We start um, at uh, eight years old, nine years old, of course, first um, around Lisbon, around uh, the, the area around Lisboa, not so far in these ages, and then from the 12, 14 years old, we start to we start to to scout every every country. Uh, we have academy with a, with capacity to 70, 70 players to to, to be there uh, internal in academy to to live there. They stay there. Yeah. Stay there. Yeah, they live there. They stay there. We, wow. we 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 promote we promote every conditions to to, to make them feel good uh, at home in our academy, and from those ages we, we start to to recruit in every country, but in younger ages we start only with uh, in Lisbon region, uh, no more than one hour far away from Lisbon, and to. We have, uh, of course, we have um, a strategy to to watch, to to stay to stay attent to all, all of the players in in the in Portugal, every every region in Portugal, 
uh, in those ages, eight from eight to till till twelve, we have Mefica schools uh, in every region. We have six Mefica schools from the north uh, to the south, and in, in those schools we we have a lot of players that they they, they don't they don't go out from home. They, they stay at home, but they start from eight years old to, to have our guidelines as a methodology, as a culture, uh, some insights on our culture. And then if they they have capacity to, to come to Lisbon from 12, they, they will. So that's like, they're like satellite centres almost. So you have, and so, yes. so that, no, satellite centres, those eight, nine, 10, 11 year olds, how often do they train? Do they train the same as academy players? Yeah, they train as academy same, players. Same, exactly the uh, same. It's not, it's not like a satellite. I think satellite is another club. We have our own clubs, our own clubs um, uh, coordinated by our coordinators, yeah. uh, coached by our coaches. Uh, they, they are our Benfica schools uh, in uh, around around all countries. So, so that that spread out all around Portugal, is it? Those those uh, yeah. centres. So that's quite yeah. interesting. So, do you know how many players you have? In all together in these centres all around, uh, Port, roughly like a rough oh, estimate. Uh, I, I, I can't give you a number because really I don't know. But I mean, so for instance, how many? What like for instance, what would like what one of these centres usually? How many players would they have in roughly? Yeah, roughly around maybe 30, 40 players. Wow! So, so, and would would and, they would they pay, play fixtures as well? Yeah, they play. They compete. They wow. they don't they don't go out from their homes with yeah. family and uh, their environment i think uh, we think that it's it's very important uh, yeah they stay in their environment and for us it's very important to be like that that's, i mean that's quite interesting because that's quite a unique model i haven't heard of that before anywhere in europe where you've actually got your um t academy teams you like dotted all around the country and training and and um and playing in this country, we have a rule that uh, players aren't allowed to live within an hour outside an hour or an hour and a half after yeah. year eleven from the academy training ground. But some clubs like Southampton have um, have an agreement because they have the sea there; they can have a bit further away, so they have another academy site, a bit like you in in Bath. But I've never heard that an academy having many many academy um, sites around. That must really help, really support you in terms of your recruitment. Yeah, really. Very, very interesting. So, um, so just tell us a little bit about then the eights to eleven, the eights to elevens or twelves. That the beginning. What does the what does the philosophy look like for those young players when they first come in? Eight, nine, ten year olds. What sort of stuff are they doing in sessions? Yeah, first we. I think this is not uh, only what Benfica do, but what I defend also as as a coach. And in those ages, uh, the young the, the young guys they need to to understand uh, what are the main tools to, to play football. Uh, of course, they, they have each, uh, each of one their own talent. Uh, sometimes they are, very techni- they are technically very good, sometimes they are physically well prepared or with potential to, to develop, sometimes they are very clever. But uh, first, they, they need to learn the basis of the football. Basis football is understand uh, how to how to play, how to execute, how to play uh, football with their own bodies. Uh, they, they 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 must understand. They need to first to to use their bodies to body parts. I, I, I give you an example. Uh, they must do, they must learn how to play with the left foot, right foot, how to turn, how to. How to play uh, with with the opposition in their backs? The, the, the basis they need to understand. So a lot of and, like, lot of technical work and ball mastery work. Yeah, ball mastery first and technical. Of course, they, they will learn because if they don't learn in those ages, uh, it will be much difficult to learn in in, young, in older ages. Uh, they, their ages that ages are critical to understand and to learn. To, to to make to to develop the, the acquisition uh, phase of learning um, the 
the technical, the ball mastery, and those edges are critical. If you don't develop this this ball mastery or technical skills in those ages, it's, it will be hard to, to, to develop from from so on. And, and I if, think, sorry, yeah, talk on, yeah, but but uh, this is the first the, the first part. But the second one, I think, it's one of the most important. Is you cannot forget this is a game. This is a collective game. Um, to, to to play collective, of course, you don't need to to learn how to play in four three three system or how to play in pressure, a pressure mentality or possession mentality. I think this is not important, but important to to stay focused. Uh, that this is a collective sport. You play with um, colleagues, teammates. You play related with some someone. You play with an opposition. You play with a direction. You play uh, with transition phases and. and if you start from this starting point, uh, you will be much more prepared to, to build your academy guidelines from the bottom because uh, you cannot forget that this is a collective game. And in the first phase, I can give you an example, first phase for me it's very important to play 2v2 games uh, with goals, with transition, with uh, relationship with your teammates, relationship with the opposition, first with less uh, with less demanding and then you, you, you will progress through the ages to, to other demanding uh, levels. And, and you mentioned that playing, you're learning to play with someone in your back, I mean just is that, mm-hmm. that focus on 1v1, the 1v1 battle, is that part of the, the club philosophy? Yeah, 1v1 I think it's very important. Um, very important uh, the task for, for the player because um, every every spaces every zones in the game uh, in, in the pitch you you play a lot of time uh, you play with one view and situation of course uh, it depends on, on, on the zone or depends on the moment of the game but every every single zone you play the most part of the game one view one situation and one view one with the ball without the ball uh, create space for to promote 1v0 in, in sometimes in some zones, play without ball, it's very important because when you play 1v1, uh, you have uh, so many goals included, not only 1v1 against your opposition, your direct op- opposite, uh, because sometimes when you are 1v1 without ball, if you move from, from, from your position to another, you will create space to, to create 1v0 for another teammate. And sometimes we forget this and for us it's very important. 1v1 not to only have the ball but play without the ball to create space for, for another. Interesting. So, so tell us then for you know if a, a nine-year-old comes in for a session what would that just talk us through what a typical session would look like. What, I mean just briefly what you know what sort of things would they do and how the session would progress. Nine? Nine? Yeah nine-year-old yes. <clears throat> yes uh, 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 I, I have to push my memory back. <laughs> I, of course, I, I coach the under nine years old. Uh, I coach players like Gonçal Guedes and Renato Sanchez in those ages. Oh. And um, I remember, of, I, I cannot tell you uh, really, honestly, because now what, what, how, how our academy coaches do in those ages, I, I cannot tell you because. Uh, as you imagine, uh, I'm more I'm more focused on my my age group and yeah, of course. and senior level now than those 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 ages. But I remember and I believe that we do the same now. I remember that we started always with the first the first 20 minutes ball mastery, ball control. Uh, technical technical development every session so that would be like that that would be one ball each would it or something like that looking like something like that yeah Yeah, something like that one ball one ball for two or some some circuits some some things like like um, you can uh, you can develop ball mastery of course you have to push for your creativity as a coach but the first 20 minutes always ball mastery ball control ball technique 
it's very important to, to, to develop this, this kind of content every day, every session. And then uh, I moved, uh, every, every time I moved to, to, to small-sided games or medium-sided games, every time the second part of the session uh, with condi condition, conditions that promote what, what I wanted to, to develop. Of course, we developed contents in weeks. We, we, pl we, we plan in weeks. We don't plan for the week. We plan for, how I say, the cycle was sometimes three, four weeks, sometimes more than then. Than. It depends on the, the progress of the, the, the learning process. But uh, the, first, the second part of the session was every time small-sided games with goals. Some, with a direction, always uh, with opposition. Um, in, in the beginning of the season, less opposition to to promote uh, the, the 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 quality of the attacking attacking process to make them believe that attacking uh, is succeed will succeed more than create frustration because when you play. Situations 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, the success of the attack is not so good as you want in the beginning of the season. Uh, and first, we try to, to give success to the attacking process. And when the, the season goes, goes the, we start to, to make more demanding uh, games like 3v3, 4v4, uh, equal numbers to, to make them apply what they, they learned in the, in the first first part of the, the, the season. And then the third part of the, the session, always game. Conditioned games, uh, we, we, don't, we don't believe in uh, shape, shape games like 5v0, 6v0, we don't believe in that. We believe first they need to, to understand how to play with opposition, of course less numbers is important in some some points of the, the season, at some moments of the season, but we believe always in games. They play sometimes uh, six v four, sometimes with two floaters, uh, internal or external floaters. Sometimes they play four v three or five v three. Sometimes they play seven v five. But always uh, this the session split into three, three parts. First ball mastery, second. Uh, F have small sided games with a direction, opposition, and transitions, and third part games. And so, when they play their game on um, the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, whenever they play, uh, what what size is the format that they do they play when they play against opposition? Yeah, in those ages they play seven side. Seven v seven. Okay, so same as yeah. same as here. So, yeah. how much? Um, just interested. So, you know, an eight or a nine year old. How much would you? Would you work towards the game, or would you in the week just work towards you know individual improvement and technical improvement? Yes, we 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 cannot focus in those ages um, in the in the competition. If you focus in the competition, probably you will forget the individual development because if you if your focus main focus is win the match, uh, sometimes you you don't focus on the individual development because you can win. But you sometimes the win in those ages will, uh, will not help to, to, to the individual development. And, and for us, the more important in those ages is to develop players. Develop players is not only develop individual uh, individual development. Uh, is touch teach teach them how to play collective, uh, how to. To, to play for win, winning mentality is very important. Uh, how to play uh, in uh, applying those those learnings that they they are learning uh, in, in the week or in the, in the month or in the season. I think the competition is for that. It's to to apply the learning process and of course uh, our methodology in those ages uh, are mainly focused on develop principles, principles that will be the, the basis of, of the, the game in the older age groups. So just tell us a little bit about those principles then, just for, for the listeners. Yeah, principles are, like I said to you before, uh, play, how, how to play 1v1, uh, how to play 
when you have angle to go to the goal, how, how, how to play when you don't have angle to play in direction of the goal, opposition goal, how to play, how to, to find space to have the ball, the positioning, uh, how, to, how to appear in the zone that some of someone from your team creates space for you, how to play that, how to attack those space, that timing to attack those play, the, those those zones. I think there are some good principles to, to develop defensively, of course, uh, how to to invite your opposition to play for zones that you want to, to invite, how to help your teammates when they are 1v1, how to help him, the, the cover, the, the second lines, things, b b basic things. Uh, there are some some principles that we want to develop, of course. And just um, you mentioned earlier about you you work for a three or four week cycle. I'm just interested in terms of like the planning. Would you plan yourself, or did you work for the cycle that was given to you from an age group or the club, or was it? Well, how did that work in terms of your planning for your for your few weeks? Yes, of course you have to to have um, a plan from the club first, of course. Uh, the, the starting point is a plan from the club, but you cannot forget that you are working with with boys with different um, capacities, learning skills, uh, different uh, timing to, to learn. You cannot forget that, because uh, if you forget that, uh, your starting point is wrong, your plan is wrong. When you plan, you you, you must have a starting point. You understand what, what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and, and but when you are in the ground, when you when you start to work with your boys, you need to first you need to know them very uh, but very detailed and understand how they, they learn, when they learn, uh, how much how many times they need to learn that, that content. And uh, of course, you need to adapt your plans and the coaches. Uh, are free to, to adapt because if you are free to adapt you will be better better coach and you will be adapt to learning process from the player and not just to to okay I want to to make the plan uh, works but uh, the, the player are not not learning Most, more important than uh, stay uh, Staying agree of the starting point, you, you must be agree with the, the learning process of the player. I think we this is very important for us. Interesting. So okay, so moving up now, then tell us a bit about when the 12s, 13, 14s. Uh, what does that look like? Uh, what's it, for, for, sorry, first of all, how how often do the under nines train a week? Nines, tens, and elevens. Three times. So they train three times a week and then play, and then so then 12s, 13s, 14s. Does that when does that change to four times? Uh, four times, I think, if I'm not wrong, four times they start to train in under uh, under twelve. Okay. Under 12. So then, tell us a bit about the twelves. And does that, I mean, uh, you say you say some boys come in at twelve. They live. They're living at the academy. Yeah. And so then they go to school at the at the academy as well. Yes. Yes. So you have your own school there. Yes, of course we. In parallel, we want to develop players, but uh, our our main guideline of academy is try to develop men. Uh, and to develop men, you need to 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 promote the, the school the school skills, also uh, the school mentality, because we already know from the experience and of course from the common sense that the most part of the players will not play professional, uh, and we have. Uh, this concern about their development as a man, uh, and we, all the players, they, they need to, to, to study, they need to go to the school. Uh, we have a social department that every day uh, they, they are very close to the players, and um, yeah, that's it. So, uh, do all the under 12s then go, go to the school, or just some uh, of them? Who? So does the whole team, all of the under-12s, will they all attend the school and be full-time in the academy? 
for sure. So everybody goes in there, and then that yeah. that runs yeah. all that runs all the way up to so yeah. 16, 17, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the nineteenth also. Nineteenth, so they all go to the same school. Yeah, same school. Sometimes not the same because of the schedule, but we have three schools. Okay. Around around the academy that we have protocols and they, they study there. And so what but, so what would that look like then in a, a, a like a an average week training? How does that work? Do they come into you in the mornings and go to school, or the other way around? Yeah, they they come because Portugal have a different um, different contest than in England. We we have really big differences between uh, the school uh, the school schedule uh, the school guidelines here because the the day is very is very fulfilled by by, by school uh, school starts at eight eight in the morning and only finish around six afternoon five afternoon every day wow. they are very busy in school uh, and we need to adapt and we cannot change that we need to adapt the sessions in those ages for for, for those boys and uh, i can give you an example they, they start you know, example of the day, they start here in the academy, they, they, they take the breakfast, the breakfast and then they go, we, we, promote, we provide transport to the school, they go to the school, they study every day, then they lunch in the academy, uh, they go again to the school, and when they return to the academy around 5 o'clock, they start uh, to train. After the session, they start to train. Sometimes individual, individual. Sometimes in the week, individual development only. Uh, Forty-five minutes. We have a department who develops the individual, uh, and then. So, what's, uh, just quickly talk about that. What's that individual development? What's that? What does that mean and look like, Joe? Yeah, individual development. We we create this department in the club because we we understand that we have that need. It's a gap for us because if we if we have more time to, to train with those boys, uh, probably we we will include individual development in the training session. But we don't have so many time to, to work together with all. But everyone, every young player has their their schedule uh, and their availability, and from that we we create individual development to to fulfill all the needs from from individual uh, and this this department works uh, in social social dimension technical dimensional the main the main one tactical uh, the psychology psychological um, so that might we, be so that might be an individual technical session with a coach like that yeah, or something along yeah, those lines yeah, yeah. 45 minutes uh, maxim in the day sometimes someone some of them they, they they practice three times in the week. Some of them only one. It depends on the on the the, the, uh, the availability. So then, just had, I was just quite interested about that the individual training because. Um, yeah. So then, so how so they sometimes do technical sessions, then sometimes do psychological sessions. So how many people do you have in this individual department? Yeah, we have a lot of resources now. We have um, psychology. We have a lot of um, a lot of people working those in this dimension now. We have a coordinator. Then we have three, uh, four, four, four persons in this area to work with the, the young boys. Working with the young boys, uh, coaches. We have the assistant coaches from every ages. They work individual development um, we have a coordinator of course uh, of, of this this department but who coordinates this is the is the, the big man is the technical coordinator he, he make the helicopter vision he, he, he make the guidelines and we and our assistants and our guys who work in this department they they make the they make the, the sessions they make the they make the plans for each individual, and yes. So, so for instance, then, Jao, um, so for instance, maybe someone would be, would be identified as having problem with maybe you mentioned earlier playing with a defender in the back. Then yeah. maybe would then they work over that over a series of weeks or something like that. Yeah, uh, individual planning. We we create individual planning for each one. Interesting. Very interesting. 
And then just tell us a little bit about then the uh, the methodology then in 12 to 16s. How does that how has that changed from the 8s to 11s? What's the differences? Uh, yeah, like I said to you before, uh, it's not my focus now, but okay. uh, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I can tell you a little bit of what we want to to promote. Of course, we need we need to develop players. We need to make them much more prepared uh, in in sixteens than uh, in nineteens. We we should, the game will have more demands uh, when you throughout the ages of course as you understand um, the principles are more complex um, and we want to develop those principles but with the same the same mentality uh, of course we understand that sometimes you don't you don't you cannot learn uh, learn just only uh, practice you need to compete you need to uh, to make uh, your learnings, you, you, you need to apply your learnings in the competition and sometimes to, to make you feel success for the players, but the, the most important thing is in which level are you when you, you play, which level are you when you play with demanding opposition. And uh, yeah, the, the same thing that I said you for the and the nines, uh, with more complexity, you move from 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 under nine to, to under sixteen, the same. But uh, you, you you start to focus more in the um, collective uh, principles uh, because when you move from the sixteens to to all the ages, uh, uh, you are more close to the professional level and you need to understand the game and so when do you start working on formations and you know do you have a do you have a, a set formation in the academy that is preferred yes we honestly we start to to, to focus on the formation when you start to play 11 aside or uh, around 11 uh, of course you need to you cannot play in chaos you, you play of course you have uh, some references uh, but our main references are the principles but you cannot you cannot play in the chaos system you you must play in the system uh, sometimes a player will play as a winger sometimes he will play as a fullback sometimes uh, he'll play as a six in those ages they, they need to understand the match they need to understand the game they need to play in every position possible of course depending on his profile of course but they, they need to understand the game they need to analyze well the game they need to to stay comfortable playing in a system every system possible but uh, as you as you said you uh, as you said before we have a reference we play in 433 system because we believe that that is the most um, I would say this is the most flexible system that you can play in teaching uh, the players because if you if you have a good a good and well defined the, the, the dynamic in the system you, you can change from the 433 to 442 to 35 352 you can play 343 uh, and the the system uh, are very flexible to, to, to teach the game to, to the boys. And so, so what age do they start playing um, 11 a side? Uh, 11. 11, okay. So, yeah, you, so that's okay. So that's interesting. And then, so then just tell us about then, um, so that you talk about them playing in different positions. What age do, they, do you start to maybe fix them in a position? Uh, sometimes uh, in the 19. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. Uh, you you change position uh, when when they are uh, almost professional, but of course we start to fix position since uh, sixteen. So then, before they're sixteen, they're playing all positions around the pitch. Yeah, depending on the, those profile. Of course, you, if you have a very good central back uh, in eleven, uh, you, you want to to develop him uh, in the center in the center back. Uh, since under 12 and 11 to, to the 19 of course but uh, I can assure you that you will you will 
try to play as a six, you will try playing as a eight, you will try playing as a fullback uh, from under 11 to under 16. But uh, we we all already know that we will, we will be a center half. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes in those, those cases you you start to develop players because if you have the the right profile to be a centre back, uh, you will not play as a winger, uh, as you can imagine. But uh, some some of them we have uh, we have here a, a big group. They are very very they can play they can play in a lot of positions, and uh, we we were just fixing in a position uh, from sixteen. Interesting. So now tell us about your role then with the under 19s. Um, tell us about your typical week with the boys. What does that look like? Our typical week is uh, is the is the typical professional week, uh, as you can imagine. Uh, as I said you before, we we are very concerned to the school, with the school, also with the school development. Uh, we want that all the players can study, all the players can have conditions to, to be another thing if they are not professional in football. But our week starts in Monday. Uh, we start the day with a breakfast, everyone together. They, then they move, they go to the gym, they, they practice on the gym, uh, their individual planning. Then they go to the session uh, and in uh, an afternoon, some of them, they go to the school uh, and the other group that study at night or, or they don't study because they are from abroad or they have another or they study just online 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 school they have uh, sessions afternoon individual sessions uh, or gym sessions uh, depending on their needs and then we, we we train every day of the week we only have one free day is a Sunday we play on Saturday uh, yeah that's our week and what Sundays boys have the day off do they just to do yes, whatever they like? Have, yes they, they need the day off uh, because some of them uh, around you can imagine around from for, between 40 uh, and 60 percent they, they are not from Lisbon they, they are f from south from north region of, of, of country and they need to, to go to their families. Sometimes it's hard because one one day is not enough because they play on Saturday. They need to travel. They need to travel back on Sunday afternoon to be on, on Monday morning starting the day. Sometimes they don't go, but uh, yeah, they need to, to, to have the day off to, to visit their families. And you talk about, you know, obviously school being really important. So, but how, what do you do? I mean, obviously there must, you talk about the relationship with the first team some of these guys must be getting called up to train with the first team and do this you know and have opportunities like that how do you deal with that with the school as well then you know they they must have to miss school sometimes yeah sometimes they, they need to miss school or because of session session we, we try to to adapt to to don't to don't give them free days or sessions when they have school but uh, we need to adapt, and we we can adapt, and we manage that with the social department. And we are in we are in agree every day, no problem about that. Sometimes first team and B team they need them to to coach to to train. Uh, yeah, and that that's the the reality. But we we need to understand, of course, in those ages, the first the first. Um, the first option for them is, is, is to be professional players because they, are, they have professional contracts. Uh, they need, if we can adapt the school, perfect, and we will do it. And we will show them that the school is very important. But when the first team demands, uh, or the some first team need them, or the national team need them, we need to manage that in a different way. Uh, and, and they need to understand uh, the priority is to develop the, their careers as a football uh, football player, of course. But we we I can tell you, I can assure you that we manage uh, with a lot of detail, <laughs> a lot of with a lot of work to, to to make them understand that they need to 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 go to the school also. And and what where do you, you play on Saturday? So what's the competition you compete in? You compete against all clubs around from from uh, the whole country. 
Yeah, in Portugal we have a different reality than than in England. In England, the under 18 championship is have a different profile. Here, from the under nine years old, we have formal competition. We compete in a championship. Under 19, we we have a, a national championship. They are split. This championship is split in, in two in two phases. The first phase, you play 12 teams, south teams, uh, two series, one south, one north, 12 each, the first division, and then we find the the four the four place four first places in each series in each in each series, yes, and then the first, the second phase of the championship uh, will find the champion, uh, we play eight teams, uh, two, two, two legs, away in home games, 14 matches, uh, and we'll find the champion. Okay, I'm just interested as well, so you ha- you, there's a B team at the club, right, and they play in like the second division, is that is that correct? Yeah, is that correct, the second division in Portugal. And so do, do often some players from your squad, squad get called up to that squad to play and, and that sort of thing, is there like movement between those squads? Yes, a lot. Uh, when the B team was created, uh, the, our strategy was to to to, to make this team a very uh, important stage in their development uh, and uh, and try to to increase the speed of their development. Uh, for example, if you are under 18. Uh, if you have a, hand, a very good and a hating player, you will not play in our team at the 19. You will play in the B team. You will move to B team, uh, and we want to develop him most, most faster to, to go to the first team. If, if he's a, a very good talent and his level allows him to play in the B team, he will play. He will not play for us. Uh, and the 19 team, in, at, at the moment, is a platform. To, to receive players from the N17 and to move players to the B team. It's a platform, the best players are competing with the, the B team. We have nine players now and then and then 19 in the B team. And, and so you said when it was created, how long is it you had the B team? Uh, six years. So interesting, because obviously, you know, as you're probably aware in England, we have a t- bit of a problem at the moment with our young players getting an opportunity. So, I mean, obviously you guys don't have that issue, but I mean, I suppose, you know, the argument that you're giving these young players adult experienced football against, you know, seasoned professionals, that must be a real benefit to your programme. Yes, it's very benefit. Uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes we, we found when B-team was not a reality for us, sometimes we found that uh, they, are, they need another level, they need another uh, challenge to, to, to promote their, their talent and to, to, to make a, a proper stimulus to, to, to develop. Sometimes the under-19 championship is not enough and the B team creates that. And you have a, you have a young Englishman in there, so um, <laughs> from, came from Arsenal, is that yes. right? Have, have you seen him play much? Yes, he's playing, uh, uh, as you can imagine, Portugal and England, uh, different contests, uh, different environment, uh, different competition, um, and is is adapt is is going well. Uh, of course, the, the the expectations from him are very high when he started in the, in the first team. Now he's competing in the B team, B team, B team in the second league. Uh, he's doing well. I think he, he has a lot of potential. And he will improve a lot. I mean, and, and what, what's your thoughts? What's I mean, you know, when you look at England, what, I mean, what's what's your um, thoughts on English players and the English de- development system? Uh, yeah, as you know, I I took a license and I'm finishing the pro license in Wales. Um, I have a lot of of contact with English reality, and I was um, I am very interested to know how. Uh, how you, how you work, how you how you make your youth development, uh, how you link youth development with a professional level, and uh, I find some differences. Of 
course, uh, I found some some very good things. Sorry, okay. I find some very good things, um, very uh, very top level work that you do. Some flaws, of course, uh, according with our reality. So, what's to talk about those differences? What what are the main sort of differences you you notice? I think the the profile of the competition level, the competition mentality is very very different. Uh, in Portugal, we start uh, very early to to make them understand that this is a game, uh, and the game we want to win. A game we we have to play collective, as I said before. The game um, you need to play with your teammates. Collective mentality, winning mentality for us is very important. I understand if you if you if you ask some theoretical people from football or from, or from another vision, they they say yeah, okay mentality winning mentality is not so important in younger ages. Da, 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 da. But um, for us, it's very important profile. Of course, not winning at any cost is not not it's not the right. Is not our main guideline when when I talk about winning mentality, but uh, teach them how to win, competing for win. Um, understand that this is a collective sport. Uh, more important than develop only the individual. I think it's a big difference between our reality and English reality. Uh, we have competition, formal competition. From younger ages, uh, I think that's a very big difference between our reality. Sometimes good for us, sometimes not good for us. Sometimes very good for you. Don't have formal competition. Uh, imagine under 15 or under 14. Uh, sometimes uh, not good. They, you can, if you put in a balance, maybe you can find the balance between us. We found not in Benfica because we have, I think we have very good mentality in, and a very good balance between winning and developing. But some clubs in Portugal they don't uh, they don't focus on the development. They focus on winning in those ages and not allow some players to develop correctly. And in England you can develop correctly. And good things I found in England is. You have a, a very good um, top class resources, top class coaches. We, we coaches are very, I think you are very interested in in this in, in these things. They are very important methodology, guidelines, or a lot of principles. Uh, this is very important for development. You have very very professional resources. Very, very good people working with the boys. Um, I'm just, think, just well, inter interested. Sorry to interrupt you, mate. So, because um, obviously, I, I, when I worked at Tottenham and Chelsea many years, uh, I, you know, we, we travelled abroad a lot, and we often saw Benfica players, and uh, always very good, always very good teams, always a very good, technically good boys. So, I mean, what were your thoughts when you saw? You mean you must have done many tournaments of all age groups. What's your What's your thoughts on the actual player, English players, and has that? You know, you've been in the game a long time. Uh, so has that changed over the years? The sorts of players you've seen coming out of England? Uh, yes, uh, I'm very interested now to, to visit some academies in England. Uh, as I told you, I have good friends in every academy in England, good friends working there. Uh, we, we talk a lot, often, but I want to see with my eyes how do you work. But I mean, in terms of when you see the players, what do you see or have you seen in the past, you know, when you see them at tournaments, English player, a typical English player maybe, what do they look like or, you know, the, if you're going to stereotype and has that changed over the years when you, what you've seen? Yes, that, that's, that, that's it was, uh, was I'm talking about. Yeah, I think I'm very interested to know because um, a few few years ago when, I, when we saw English players, English teams, they are very good players, very good talented players. But um, very, they don't play like I can say you. They are like 
they, they are not so adaptable players. They only know playing in the same way. And, and when the game change, uh, or the coach change the game, they have more difficulties to adapt to, to, to the game. Uh, I, I can, do you understand this? Yeah, absolutely. I'm clear. And yeah. they are very <laughs> mindsetted to a, a some type of game. Uh, and when you change during the game, they are not so able to adapt and some, the most part of the time they are not able to to, to have succeed. Uh, and now you can, I think, in my opinion, you are better in this. Uh, I think you can adapt much better. Uh, I think now when, when we see young players in England, you see very powerful players physically, very powerful, very well prepared because uh, I know that Premier League uh, level, you need to be very well prepared physically. Uh, I think it's a common sense opinion about Premier League environment. You need to be very physical, very well prepared physically. And I think you bet a lot of in this, in this dimension. Uh, compared with our reality, it's, it's huge the differences. Um, technically, very, very, very good, very good players, very well prepared players. Technically, the basis, the pass, the reception, the the heading, the shooting, very well prepared players. I, I think you can improve on decision making. Uh, you can improve all the academies in decision making, and to improve decision making is to improve in the some of some of um, guidelines of the methodology. Uh, methodology that promotes decision making is is uh, it's, it's a mentality, it's a philosophy. Interesting. And so, just tell us a bit about then uh, coach development. Firstly, at the club, what does the club do to help develop its coaches and train them? And then also, then what do you do as a coach yourself to develop you? I mean, you talked about you know visiting academies and stuff. Yeah, I'm. Uh, in my in my mind, um, I need to 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 improve every day. Uh, in my mind, I need to, to talk with a lot of a lot of different realities every day to 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 make me much better coach. Uh, for me myself, uh, I have I have the I have the the concern to to know how everyone works. Uh, of course, I have my convictions. I have my ideas. But I need to reflect every day. If I don't reflect every day, I think uh, I will think that I know everything and the best, or I'm 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 the best coach ever, uh, or I'm I'm doing the correct things. And I think for coaches, young coaches uh, like me, you need to, to reflect on your practices. You need to know uh, another ideas, different ideas. Sometimes to to make your convictions much better, sometimes change some of your convictions, sometimes for learn, because we need to learn every day. I am very focused on around areas, not only football, technical football, like systems or methodology, technical things about football, but things about how to lead with boys, how to, to, how to lead with boys, how to lead with your... Uh, people around football, like agents, uh, directors, board, blah, 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 parents, uh, fans. Uh, I, I, I'm a very interested guy in psychology uh, teams because you, if you cannot forget you are working with men, we are working with uh, human beings. And to, 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 to be a good coach, you need to be a good human being um, leader. For me, it's very important to, to understand this. Uh, of course, technical, technically speaking, always, uh, always uh, reflect on my methodology. Every day, uh, I want to be, I want to make the best session possible. I think about my sessions uh, 24 hours a day. I'm very passionate about creating exercises, creating exercises that 
fit with my content. Uh, I don't create exercises for nothing. I create exercises to achieve a goal, to achieve uh, a development as a team, as a, as a backline, as a tacking uh, situation, as uh, individual development. Uh, every exercise have a goal to achieve. And for me, it's it's a it's a very important thing for a coach. And so you obviously, and um, when we spoke before, you said you you'd had a uh, some time with the first team as assistant with the first team. Uh, tell us a little bit about that time and what was that like? Look, you've gone from the beginning all the way to the end, and what were the main differences working with that with the first team? Yeah, it was it was amazing. Uh, I was um, twenty seven years old at that moment. I was very young, uh, and I face players as Rui Costa, Luizão, Di Maria, uh, top players at that moment. My, I was their fans, and suddenly I was uh, working with them, and the profile of the, the staff was very low profile, at the, low, not low profile, but the staff the staff at, at that moment was an uh, internal um, solution for, you, I don't know if you know the, the Spanish coach Camacho, José Antonio Camacho, yeah. left the club and the club found uh, an internal solution for six months and uh, I was in that, in that staff. Um, when I suddenly, I, I found myself uh, make the sessions in, in, in staff, staff mentality, of course, working in teamwork, of course, with the staff. But I was uh, leading the, the exercises, I was uh, talking with the players every session. It was a very good experience for me because I need to face another reality, different reality from the youths, but very important <coughs> in my coaching process my coaching development process because uh, as you said I saw the handing point I saw how both need to achieve how all they need to achieve that level all in what what they need to, to have to achieve that level it was very important for me knowing the ending point it was decisive in my process because um, I was working every, I, I work every day in these ages to develop players to achieve that level. I know the level. I know that level. It's very important for me to, to understand um, what is the ending point. And this is a, a thing that coaches in these ages uh, must, must understand. And some, I mean, you said you're working with players like Di Maria. I mean, what was that like? I mean, setting your sessions up and trying to coach these guys. It must be a really different dynamic for the 19s and obviously further down. Yes, it was. It was very, very, very different. Uh, I remember some episodes with with them. Di Maria, I can tell you, no problem. Um, when the the session ends, he was at the at that moment, and the nine and the 19 years old. And he wanted to, to develop, he wanted to, to improve, and every session he, he asked me to, to stay with him in the end, uh, doing crosses, doing shooting skills to improve the technique. And every day, every session, he, he did that. Uh, and I understand that all the players, the, the best players, the best players ever, they like to work, they like to improve, they need to, to make. Uh, extra training, extra working, uh, they are very focused on working to improve and those players, those talented players of course, because they are very talented, they need to, they need to be uh, hard workers uh, and I saw with my eyes, not what I read, I saw, uh, this is a very true, very true mentality. Do you, do you think that's um, a, common, a common trait, a common personality where Top, the top players, they work away from the game, they go and work on their technical areas away from the training. Uh, no, no doubt about that. Uh, I know, I, I know from, from these years, I know a lot of 
top players in different realities, England, France, Portugal, and all the top players, they, they, need, they need from themselves to work extra, to, to be hard workers, to achieve the best levels ever. Because if you see players like Cristiano Ronaldo, uh, every time you want to be the best. And this is a common profile of the, the best. Do you think, um, just I mean, reflecting on your time working with nines, tens, elevens, sixteens, that do you try and encourage players to have to have that mentality, or do you think they have that already, or do you think that's something you can you can um, try and develop that that will to that intrinsic mechanism to want to go away and work on my technical areas away from training, put the extra hours in? Yes, uh, first, first they need individual. They need to have this this profile individual. Uh, I think. Uh, you, you can find young players with this mentality, be the best every day, uh, very ambitious, uh, individual profile, you can find. But uh, for us, it's very important as an academy to, to promote this environment. Everyone in the academy, uh, we are very demanding, uh, everyone in every areas. We, we cre cre create every day a very demanding environment. Uh, when some player achieve our level, they need to understand that they need to be the best, they need to improve every day, they need to, to stay in top level every day. Of course, it depends on the ages, uh, days, moments, of course, I, we understand that. But we, we, want, we want to make them feel when they cross the line from, from our academy, they need to, they, they, when they step in an our academy, they need to feel demanding, ambition, uh, they need to feel winning mentality, because uh, we want to promote that environment. And of course, some, some, some part of them, they are not prepared, some time of them, they will quit, for sure, but the, the most part of them, they will develop these skills, these mentality skills, and to understand that uh, this this demanding this demanding uh, environment is decisive for the development of the boys. And, and so, what? Just lastly, last couple of questions. What what advice would you give to a young aspiring coach who would like to get to a high level like you you're you're at at the moment? Yes. First, believe believe in your in yourself. Believe in your ability. Uh, I am a coach who who steps who make uh, safe steps every season. Uh, um, I started 17 years ago with nobody helping me. Uh, I was, I was, I started from the scratch. Uh, I started with nobody helping me. Um, I believe in myself. Um, I heard a lot of good advices good advice for me was uh, it's impossible to achieve great level it's not possible it, only for the former players only for the friends of friends uh, I heard a lot of these good advices and I consider good advices because it makes me believe that you, you can change them and I was and I was like that I believe in myself um, I don't I never uh, make illusions from the compliments, I never go down when they criticize me. I always be, I always was focused, and I, I, I keep focused on what's really important for be a good coach. Uh, and for me, be a good coach is uh, do things right every day. And think things right is, uh, as a coach, you can only control your process. You cannot control what people will say about you, what directors think about you, but uh, you need to be the best coach ever for the players that you have. Best coach is a demanding coach, friend of the players, friend to help and to make them understand that you are there for, for them, you need to, to work with them for them, not for you. The, the players feel when you play or, or when you work for you or when you work for them and they like coaches that work for them, for them, their development, and demanding uh, good methodology, 
to, to challenge players every day. You need to challenge them. If they feel that your methods don't challenge them, uh, probably you will not be best coach for them. And uh, finally, uh, I work every day to be the best coach ever. Uh, even if I coach uh, under 19, even if I go to a conference, even if I'm talking with you now, uh, I always think that I need to be the best ever uh, to, to, to put my levels uh, high. And finally, just then, uh, what, what about advice for a young player starting, starting his or her journey in the game? Yeah, don't lose passion for game. I think it's it's important one. You need to to be passionate about the game. If you don't have passion, passion for me, passion is going to the session to, to feel that you will you will play, you will enjoy playing with the ball, playing with your teammates. And sometimes football now, uh, grassroots football, is about uh, shape shape. <laughs> Shape games, uh, not enjoyable sessions. Uh, you don't, you don't play, you don't compete. Sometimes it's a problem. Uh, not only in Portugal, in England, every everywhere, uh, grassroots football is not playing. And I think it's, a, it's it's a mistake, a big mistake, because with this you will make players lose passion about the game. If you if you really go to the deep of football. You will see in, in the streets, you will see in the neighborhoods that the kids are uh, the kids have passion for the game because they play they, because they play 4v4 because they play uh, 11 years old against 16 years old they play they have the the competition uh, environment included in the game and you, you need to, to to make you need to make them passion to make have passion for the game. I think it's very important for the young boys. And second, uh, work hard every day. Don't, uh, the, 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 the same advice that I give to all coaches, young coaches, is the same that I give to the young players. Uh, don't, don't believe in that good advice that you are not capable to achieve. And if you have self-confidence, if you believe in yourself, work hard, don't believe in illusions, don't believe in blah 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 things that you heard every day from your uh, not coaches, not, not, not people who want your best for, for football development, uh, work every day, try to be the best every day, you will achieve a very good level, for sure, every day. Jao, thank you so much, it's been really, really interesting, thank you for your time. Okay, thank you, we we'll speak soon. If you need something, please let me know. Thanks for tuning in to the MyPersonalFootballCoach.com Soccer Player Development Podcast. MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Dynamic Ball Mastery Program is the world's leading online individual technical training program, proven and developed at the highest level in the English Premier League. Sign up now to train like the pros and take your game to the next level. Master the ball, master the game. 